I just want to point something out on this time frame here because this is pretty important. Notice here that we're on the monthly time frame and notice that we have we have this area here and we have this area here. Notice that I mean these are two months sometimes three months uh, apart but notice how price almost always returns back to the origin. Okay and this is why it's important for us to focus on the origin of these really big moves on the big time frames because price at some stage needs to gravitate towards these historical areas of supply and demand because this is where we're going to attract or onboard the biggest number of buyers and sellers okay so messing around in the middle while that might play out shorter term on the smaller time frames if you want to follow the big moves and you need to be looking at the bigger time frames okay so notice here we have this one here and price came down here so price was out of balance it rebalanced this price imbalance rebalanced we had this enormous push higher uh, which rebalanced this price imbalance here. We even went a little bit further and then price came back down here and then people are thinking, oh, price is never going to come back down here, but it does and it did it here and it went deeper and it returned back to the origin of these pushes higher here. Okay, so if you're positioning yourself in line with supply and demand on the monthly chart, even though you're trading the small time frames, where well, this can really uh, enable you to hold your positions for much, much longer. Okay, okay, so let's look here. We have a bleeding edge price, which is just here. Um, where do we have supply and where do we have demand? We have this area here, which is supply. And this is supply because when price left here, we managed to form a new low. And this is pretty important to us. Um, we have our area of demand here. And this is an area of demand. And maybe some of you are asking why I didn't draw it like that. And the reason I didn't draw it like that is because the beginning of the buy zone is the low of the deepest pullback uh, of the candle that closed above the high of this accumulation, which is just here. So I'm going to leave it right like there. Okay. So price tested there. This is the beginning of the buy zone. We tested it. We came close, close, close. And this is where we managed to feed into that area. So this is where price will probably turn around and start to wriggle higher. Okay. It's because we've, re we've returned to the origin of this move. Note that we do have this down here. And so for this one down here, where is the origin going to be? It's going to be the candle that closed above this one here, which is going to be here. So it's going to look something like that. So we can expect price at some point in the future to return back to the 6109 area. And why is it going to do that? It's going to do that because it has to. It has to in order to drive price higher. The lower this goes, the more people we are going to see uh, engaging in the market uh, to the upside. Okay, good. Well, you can see we've returned to the origin of this area of demand. We've come down, we've poked into it, and now we are starting to see price uh, structure of the market, so price structure uh, break down here. And we have this area of supply just here, and this is supply because when price left, when price left here, we managed to form a new low, which poked into here. Would this mean that we're going to sell this? It doesn't. And the reason I wouldn't be keen on selling here is because, number one, market structure has failed, which qualifies this area here as an area of demand and also we are reacting a monthly demand so we have two reasons not to begin to sell okay again number one market structures fails so that is that's confirming something down here is demand and we're also reacting a monthly demand okay so we have um, for a probably for for a period into the into the let's say the weeks the coming weeks uh, we have an upward bias for the time being okay sorry about that it's got a house full of kids again getting close to the end of the holiday um okay so we have this just up here okay so we have a, a long bias for the australian dollar japanese yen if we have a look here on the weekly chart um, and you look for kind of the same thing you can see that we have market structure which is moving higher so we have upward sloping trend line so we have demand that is driving price uh, we have this area here, just here, and this candle closed above the highs of the accumulation. And so we mark the lowest low of this candle. So the slingshot was pulled back to this area here, something in here. This is where price came to before it moved higher. Okay, so this is the one that is currently uh, reacting. This here, some people might look at this and think, oh, this is some supply. This isn't supply, and this is not supply because it did not manage to accomplish anything. Okay, we managed to compromise this trend line, but but we did not manage to consume this area of demand here. Okay?
okay and so this is nothing to us it's just a, a bearish engulfing um, but that's it okay so price is poking down into this area of demand beginning of the buy zone the low of this candle our price is wriggling higher so we can expect price to continue moving higher from here